outside with a thing. We outside with a clip. Fuck. Bang. We outside with a gang. We outside with a clip. Fuck. Bang. All right. Back outside. But we inside. Who I'm inside with? Ugly Money Nietzsche. The Ugly Money CEO. AKA. You know what I'm saying? Big Nietzsche. Him for real. <laughs> him at the dot com. Him at the Daniels. Yeah, I'm him. I don't got the sound effects, man. I know you want to. <laughs> Your favorite a... button pusher? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> Let, let's go with the. Uh, let's talk about um, the first question I like to pop the stand off with, man. How is your mental health, brother? I'm blessed, brother. I'm uh, highly favored. I'm in great spirits. Uh, every day I wake up and be myself. You know, there's no better job. I, I literally wake up and the phone rings and it's people on the other side and they trying to give me money. And mm. uh, it's a great, great life. So, uh, you know, my kids are good. They all getting great grades in school. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, my dick still work pretty damn good. I got five <laughs> kids, so shit, it's amazing life. <laughs> I got four girls and one boy. Four girls and four. So that thing ain't working. Okay. <laughs> Man. I, so so for, for somebody out there, mental health that ain't good, you know what I'm saying? Give them some pointers on how you get your mental health to where it is now, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I, I, I've had this conversation a couple times about depression, right? Right. And, and it's not that I don't believe depression exists. It's just that I don't understand it because I've never really I've been, a, been a victim of it. Um, I, I don't cry over spilt milk. Facts. Meaning things in the world are going to mess up. Things in the world are going to happen. Gosh. Bad things are going to happen. And I just kind of don't cry over what I cannot fix. And I just keep it pushing out. I, I believe that anything bad happens is a part of your, your journey. I believe that it's supposed to happen so you can learn a lesson from it and grow from it. And so whenever, when anything, something bad happens in, in my life, I use it as a, a learning block. It actually gives me gas. You know, it's like mm. a battery in my back. It's like, ooh, I got a blessing coming. Cause usually when you're about to get a big blessing, it's always something. The devil try to trick you on, right now. before you about to get a big blessing. <laughs> so anytime the devil get to going, I'll be like, oh, I'm about to level up. And every single time in my life that I've had a major level up, it's always been the devil meddling before. Facts. Now that's that's powerful, man. Salute. You know what I'm saying? That's powerful. Let's get right into it. Why is your name Ugly Money? I can make an observation. <laughs> Cause you got your money so so long that it's ugly. Like, you know what I'm saying? But what I just is thought I was an ugly ass nigga, man. Ah. <laughs> uh ugly money <laughs> is the process of success. Everything between your first dollar and your first million, that's ugly money. It's the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs. A lot of times in my life, before I was able to count hundreds, thousands, or even millions, I had to learn how to count a dollar. And so that was my my life it was a whole bunch of little steps to finally get to a certain point in my my, my career so you know i've i failed more times than most people have tried a lot of people don't understand that i have failed so many times in mm. life and it's just the same process you fall down you get up you brush the dirt off and keep going and you're gonna fall down again and so but each time that you fall down you learn something you get better, you become stronger. And so I think, believe that I'm here as a process of, uh, from, from all of my failures and not quitting. And mm. so that's what ugly money embodies. That's tough, man. So when you talk about failures, man, so are you failing and then having success or are you failing, 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 then having success? Like how, is it an up and down thing? Like oh man, it's just random. I'll have a great success and then fall flat on my ass. I mean, you know, uh, if you ain't if you ain't got it all and lost it all and got it back again, you ain't hustling it. Oh if you ain't went broke twice, you ain't hustling. And Dang. it's been several times in my life where I hit rock bottom. <laughs> and then I be knowing, I'm like, well, I look on the bright side. The only place I can go is up because I'm broke as shit right now. Fact. And so, um, yeah, man, it, 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 it could come after a great success and then you fail. And then, then you get through a streak of failures where everything it seems like you're doing is failing. Like, damn, tried that, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. But as long as you keep going, you're going to end up somewhere. Mm -hmm. You only lose when you quit. So all those failures, those are just lessons. Those are lessons to build yourself into your success. And by the time you failed and learned your lesson, you'll be that much stronger and that much more powerful when it's time. You know, I think that, uh, you know, we got to miss some shots before we hit a game winner. Now and let, so I missed a lot of shots. Let's dive into it, though. Um, so give the people some details on what the figures were. Was it uh, uh, investing in, in, in anything or trying a new venture? Like, 
creating something? What, like, what, what was it that failed for you? Oh, everything. I've tried to be everything in the world. I've tried to be a rapper before. Okay. Um, and, I mean, one could say I didn't blow up huge. I got signed. You How know much you invested in, in your rap career? Oh, my goodness, man. Um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of God thousands damn. of dollars. <laughs> and then the company that I signed, Shots Out Push Management, they invested hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, uh, you know, I didn't become the next little baby. I didn't. Right. You know what I mean? But it was a part of my process because I'm here now mm -hmm. because of all the things that I endured through my music career. A lot of the network and the people that I make money with today are people that I met when I was rapping. Uh, half the promoters in Atlanta, all the tastemakers in Atlanta that come to my music summits and things, these are people, I was a customer. Yeah. I used to, I used to, I used to pay P Brown and, and Two Official and Tony Neal and, and TJ's DJs for, for their services. Right. And now, you know, I, I believe that we're peers. And so um, if I had not gone through that, I would, I don't truly believe, I don't think I'd have been here today. Um, I was a radio personality. Right. You know, uh, when I got signed, I resigned from the radio personality. I tried to go back to radio. Mm. They told me no. <laughs> that was a failure in my eyes. Right. But had I not failed, I would have never started my podcast. I would still be on local radio right now. And you were making about, the, yeah. you know, $250 a week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so in essence, sometimes the failures, a.k.a. lessons, are needed for you to succeed. I would have never started my podcast had that radio station probably told me yes. Dang. I would have been trying to be the best radio host in the world. You know what I mean? Facts. But now, you know, due to the fact that I had to learn that lesson of why are you trying to go back to something that you've already done? Um, you know, I have one of the largest podcasts in the Southeast, respectfully. I'm brushing my own shoulder. <laughs> the Southeast, why you made it? Why you, why you put that... Uh <laughs> Why you put this off? I mean, you there? know, I just I just need to let them know where I'm applying this pressure at. You know what okay. I mean? There's okay. people out over the world that's saying it, but you know, and down bottom down here on this side of town, yeah, we the biggest. <laughs> All right, for the people out there, man, what's your podcast called? Ugly know. Money Podcast, and I got different shows that's on this spot. So Ugly Money Podcast is like the parent company. Mm -hmm. uh, that's me, you know, and my team, and then we have several different shows that are on the podcast network on our YouTube page. Uh, I think we just got to 230,000 subscribers uh, yesterday, actually. That's hard. Come on. Wow, yeah, so wow. we got uh, several different shows. Like my brother Biz and myself, we do a show called Trigger Alert where we talk about male and female relationships. My brother, <laughs> oh, uh, Coach Blue, he has, I know you didn't say that, the biggest stream ever. We got a Pretty Money podcast with China Monet. So, you know, as my platform got bigger, I, the first thing I wanted to do was bring my homies along. We're like, hey. Well, shoot, if we podcasting and they want to see this, well, let's bring y'all up, too. So, you know, now we have over six, you know, different shows on the platform. And uh, in 2025, we're going to launch our own actual network. So how, how did that work, right? Because me, I do We Outside, and I'm doing it by myself. Right. And I have a lot of different variations of content, if you can say, right? right. And you got the same thing. So how is that managing all those? You know what I'm saying? Because... You might get to the point where like they really want to see you do this, but you keep doing the other thing and the other thing and the other thing. But I just want to see this on your channel. So how you keep people engaged and subscribe? Cause they might just come just for the Ugly Money podcast. Well, yeah, and you, I mean you can give them a choice, but at the end of the day, like if a person likes what you got going on, that comes with just your brand. You know, um, like people watch No Jumper, but it's not always Adam. Right. You know, people watch Vlad, and it's not always Vlad. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 the quality it, it just has to be the same quality all around the board whether or not i'm on screen or on camera doing a, a podcast the same quality is going to be with my brother biz or my brother blue or china monet like we're going to have that same ugly money pizzazz that same ugly money energy and that same ugly money quality and as long as you keep the quality and the and the uh you know, just the basis, the ground fundamentals of the brand, people will be more acceptable to new faces and new new personalities. Yeah, that was up, man. Because I, I was I, I was having a hard time. Right. And, and me, I'm an idea man. <clears throat> I got me million ideas. Right. I don't even apply all of them yet. I'm kind of spraying them out. But when I had, you know, I've, I've been following you for a while. And then I just noticed, I was like, we literally do the same shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just, you do it on a different scale. Respect. But, and then you also rap before I also rap before. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I still rap. I still yeah. make music. But, sure. but I do this too. I do the media. So it just, I'm like, okay, we, we, we got similar stories already and we haven't even met. We run in the same path. Respect. 
So that when I when I'm watching your channel, I'm like, he got a lot of shit going on, but I got a lot of shit. But like, why people? You know what I'm saying? Uh, they coming for this one thing. How do I keep them engaged on all the other stuff I got? Yeah, too? you just got to keep hitting them and, and giving it. Some, it's a consistency thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, after a while, people going to realize that that person's not going nowhere, so they might as well get used to it. Facts. You know, and that's one thing I can say about my brother Biz. Like, just chill. Like, w bro, he's on my channel almost more than me. <laughs> you know what I <laughs> mean? But by, by the time after two or three months, they get used to seeing him. You know Facts. what I mean? And, and he's he's built his own fan base and audience within our community and within our universe. And so that it just comes with a consistency thing. No one, no, nothing is gonna, nothing is gonna kick off overnight. Trigger alert didn't kick off overnight wow. I was just arguing with you know a female <laughs> about Tori and Megan and she kept over talking me so I muted her mic and pushed the bomb and this platform was born but it's so still what you be doing you mute they mic yeah for sure because I a man like, cannot I, talk I to a woman dog I see them talking I'm like yeah. I don't really they lower than what they was a man can <laughs> listen a man cannot out talk a woman no matter how hard you try you are not if you and a woman Ooh. are going toe-to-toe -to -toe talking <laughs> a, you're not gonna be able to out talk a woman right so what women like to do is they like to get their shit off yeah, and then yeah, when yeah. you have something to say they're gonna talk more no, we don't do that on my show. You, I'm gonna let you talk. So in every one of my clips, you can hear when the women are talking because it's music playing. Dum, dun, 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 dun. That's them popping their shit. I'm quiet. Yeah. I'm sitting there listening, and then they say something crazy, and I push the button. It's my turn. Yeah. Now when it's my turn and the alarm goes off, now all of a sudden they want to talk more. No, ma'am. Your mic is muted. Pipe down. It's my turn. We're going to have a conversation. And a lot of women don't like that, you know, because <laughs> um, as we all know, women have a tendency to have a, a strong dis, you know, a strong discontent with being quiet sometimes. They want to be heard. They want to be heard. And I hear them. But when it's my turn to talk, you're going to hear me too. Oh, God. M muting the mic is like two player bro. <laughs> i'm like i hit them but they ain't loud as they was right. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right so let's, let's dive into that though um what it, let's do this what's the most successful show on your youtube channel oh wow oh man um it, it matters it matters what you view as success um i think the most viral yeah. content is, is the, the the stuff we do with the women on trigger alert come on it goes viral consistently I think the legacy as far as what will be the most impact is the interviews. I think some of our interviews, uh, man, they used our interview. Trump used our interview when he was talking about when he got in, uh, when he got indicted by Fannie Willis. Damn. He took he took some of the information from me and YSL Mondo's interview and, and said it to the world. I'm not going to repeat what he said. You got to go back word. and see it. But, you know, that is, that's a story that I broke. Uh, you know, when, when they talked about takeoff uh takeoff being in texas with with trick dice right and which which led to his untimely passing that story broke on my platform mm. uh when when people heard about gucci man allegedly not killing pookie loke right that was on my platform so there's like these these monumental cultural moments that have happened just in conversations with various people and so i think that you know, it just matters what you view success. I mean, it's it's all us, and uh, I'm thankful for it all. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm looking forward to the new things that we're going to be posting on the platform as well because I got some game shows we're about to start doing too. I mean, I seen the twerk, what is it, trick or twerk? Twerk or dare. Twerk, twerk or dare. Yes, sir. <laughs> this man now, I got big plans for that like, one. What the Shouts out Yellow Boy. <laughs> I got big plans for that. i like, what, what, what kind of fuckery is this, man? <laughs> no, I mean, because, you know, it's just like, you know, it's a lot of podcasts. It's a lot right, of scripted right. series. It ain't a lot of game shows, you know what I mean? And, oh, God. and Steve Harvey holding it down on Family Feud, <laughs> but that's still, you know, before Steve came on, Family Feud won't no hood game show. Right, right, right. And I was fact. like, man, we need, we need a game show for us, you know? You know yeah, what I mean? And so, yeah, I got a lot of insane. different, different, different <laughs> ideas coming, bro. Twerking dance, put that shit on OnlyFans, bro. right? <laughs> but now uh, let's get into this. So, um, let let let's take it back before we dive in real deep into the, the potty. Um, let's take a step back. Tell the people where you from. You know what right. I'm saying? Where you grew up at? Well, I was an army brat, an army brat. Mm -hmm. So my father was in the military, so I moved around a lot. But uh, I claim Virginia. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from a small town in Dinwiddie County called McKinney, Virginia. Okay. No one's heard of it. It's a city with no stoplights. And <laughs> when I left, the, 
the capital was 1,500 people that lived there. Damn. So it's a city with no stoplights, no major, we don't have a McDonald's, there's not a Walmart there. There's no major food stores and everything like that. And my next door neighbor was over a mile away. Damn. So I come from the sticks, I come from the dirt, I come from the clay, like literally the mud for real. And so uh, if you would ever take a trip to where I'm, where, I, where I'm from, you would think that I would have been a farmer and not an entertainment person, right. right? But that just goes to show that, you know, it's not about where you're from, it's about what you do when you get to where you're going. And uh, I always had big dreams, but I was the type of person that I was gonna wake up and go make those dreams realities. And so even on them dirt roads, you know, I was just thinking and believing that I was gonna, you know, be on TV as well. And uh, I mean, it's living proof. Man, you you is TV. Uh, is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <clears throat> so how was your growing up in your household? Like you had a two parent home, or like how, how was that situation growing up? Yeah, I had mom and dad. You know, my my uh, my. my uh, my upbringing was a little different than uh, than a lot of my partners, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that you know how rare it it, it was until I got older, mm -hmm. you know, playing basketball with my homies and whatever. And I, you know, and they used to always call my dad. You know, they used to act like my dad was their dad. <laughs> right. You know, I'm like, man, where your daddy? <laughs> and I remember my partner, rest in peace, Pete. He's like, I ain't got no daddy. Mm -hmm. I was like, what you mean? You ain't got no daddy? How you ain't got no daddy? You here? Right. He's like, I ain't got no daddy. I don't fuck with that nigga. Mm. And then my other partner, Tyrone, shouts out to him, Ty Live. He was like, uh, yeah, I don't fuck with my daddy either. I'm like, wow. What do you mean you don't fuck with your daddy? Like, that's your daddy. Yeah, that, that's like, your daddy. I ain't seen that nigga in 10 years. And I was like, wow. Right. Because, bro, in my family, my father went to work. He was in the military. He went to work like a crack of dawn. He would get off, you know, about 5 o'clock and uh, be home by like 6 and on Friday nights, man, we we pull out TV trays and watch TGIF. We watch Family Matters step by step and and Boy Meets World like a family. Like yes. I remember sitting around in the living room as a family watching Nutty Professor. And I had no idea how wholesome that was, like on some black Brady Bunch shit. Right. Because I had mom and dad, and I didn't know how blessed I was until I got older to really realize that how many of my partners didn't have the same situation or the same, you know, type. I, I could go to mama, I could go to daddy. When mama said no, I could go to daddy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, when daddy said no, I go to mama. And mama be like, what your daddy saying? I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> that's what it is. And so, um, and I knew that I could get, I could get a little more leverage with my mama than my dad. And my daddy didn't play. And, yeah. and, but I think, I'm thankful for the fact that my father was a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. My father's the main reason why I'm not dead locked up in jail. Come on now. Because growing up, the, my discipline came from the fact that there was nobody at school that was more intimidating to me than my father. Mm. There was none of these niggas that went to class with me that was worth me having to see Philip Harris Sr. <laughs> right? And so though. if Philip Harris Sr. said, don't go over here and cut up or you're going to have to come see me, right? that kept me in line. Because nothing... No kid at the school was more terrifying to me than my father. My oh, father's wow. still the only man in this world that I've ever been scared of, but scared in a good way, a scared of respect. Right. You know, a fear of the fact of disappointing him. And so I think I'm so thankful for him because of the fact that he instilled certain things. No, I couldn't go out and stay out all night like the rest of my partners. Right. No, I didn't get to just go do anything, you know what I'm saying, and, and just, just run around rampant. No, nah, I, had, I had structure in my life, I had discipline, and I, you know, I had to take accountability for my actions. If my grades weren't good, it was gonna be consequences and repercussions. And I think I took those things in real life, and it's worked for me, whereas some of my partners might not have had the same success later on in life because they didn't have those values. Thanks. And I think it's important that all men need to have a certain level of discipline with themselves because uh, if, if we're not disciplined, we become emotional. And when men become emotional, somebody dies or somebody goes to jail. Come and on. so I think it's very important for us as, as men to be in control of our emotions, and that comes with discipline. That's a fact. <clears throat> Before you start doing what you're doing now, right, uh, we in high school, right? And you know, high school, we're on the last leg of our like teenage life. Right. So you gotta figure this shit out right okay. now. So w what did you wanna do after you graduated from high school? Everything. Right. I wanna do everything. Come on. I failed at all of it. Mm -hmm. 
I, uh, I think in 10th grade, I wanted to be a marine biologist. In 11th grade, I wanted to be an actor. By 12th grade, I wanted to be a producer. Mm. So I went to college. I got a scholarship. I played drums. I was the uh, percussionist. So I got, a, I, got a, I got a scholarship to Virginia Commonwealth University. But I was the kid in, like, I don't know if you've seen the movie Drumline, where Nick Cannon, he can't read music. I was the other guy. I was the ball-headed guy. I could read music. So I could sight-read something and just get it. That's something that I was really good at. So I ended up getting a, scholar, a music scholarship to go to Virginia Commonwealth University and realizing, that like, yo, I don't want to be a band director. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> you know, at 18, it's, 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 I still didn't know what I wanted to be in life. I'm 42 now, brother. I'm still trying to figure out mm. what I want to be in life because I want to be some old things. Like, I figured out some things I'm being in life, right? <laughs> but that's a, no, it's a whole, by the time you get there, it's like, it's a whole other thing I want to do. Right. And so, you know, I, I think that for people that are ambitious, sometimes it's a gift and a curse because it's never settled. You, you never can settle. You're never exactly content. It's just like, okay, I did the studio thing. All right, cool. All right, I did the record label thing. All right, cool. Yeah, I didn't do the podcast thing. All right, cool. Let's do what's next. And it's always a next for me. And so I just never, I never stop. I'm never settled in the position that I'm in. If you met me five years ago, I'm farther along now than I was then. If you see me five years from now, I'm damn sure going to be farther along than I am now. Oh so I never, I never fall in love with the moment. I appreciate it. Hey, you know, like we're here at the new uh, Ugly Money Studios location here in Atmosphere. And uh, I'm appreciative, you know what I'm saying? Because three years ago, I was opening up my 4,000 square foot complex. Right. Now we're at a 50,000 square foot location. Woo. Yeah, five years from now. Come on. You can only imagine <laughs> what it's going to be. And so, and so, but that, that, that just undying fire in me. It's just something that that I've always had. Like I always wanted to do some amazing shit. I wanted to do some dope shit, and I wanted to do what make me happy. And I try, as long as it's making me happy, it doesn't feel like work. So I get up and do it every day. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, now, the question is, would you go back to rapping? You know, you got Adam Twenty Two right out here rapping. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying he he was never a rapper. Now he's rapping. Um, I rap better than every podcaster in the game. You don't rap I'm better put, than I'm me. I'm that's a clip. You don't rap better than I me. I rap though. better <laughs> than every podcaster in the game. We can go song for song. I guarantee. Nah. Every podcaster. Come on, talk to Every him. rapper turned <laughs> podcaster. I rap better. Than, you do not. You do not have more hit songs than I have. Oh my goodness. And uh, I got over a thousand records in the box. I got records with Dolph. I got records with Gotti, Black Youngster. I got records with Trey Songs. Who? Young LA. And nobody cared. Unreleased or did you? Unreleased. Unreleased is in the vault. So the Dolph joints out. Okay, the Dolph. It, one it out. came out. <clears throat> okay. Um. If 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 there's a place in my life mm -hmm. where there is a want for it, I consider it. Mm. But I am. So I, I did 20 years of rapping just to be dope. You did 20 years of rapping? I was rapping from 2000 and I retired in 2018. Jesus. I was I got signed in 2014. So after I got signed, I, I retired shortly thereafter. Uh, yeah, I was totally I'm totally I was totally done with just rapping to be rapping. Now, what, you know how what? people just be rapping? They just have a whole bunch of songs. They just be dope, but don't nobody right. know they dope. Right. I was that guy. You just, you just shot a shot though. You know Joe Budden got a Yeah, podcast. yeah, I can rap better. I got more hits than him. <laughs> Gilly and Wallow, Gilly, yeah, I got more Gilly hits. Gilly got. We can go so I, I I do a versus battle with any any podcaster. And, and this is no disrespect cuz Joe Budden is Joe Budden's in my top 20 of hip hop artists. I I I watch him. I mean, he he got an album series that's classic. We want to put 20 songs against my 20 songs. I'm going to watch every last one. God damn. That's just my opinion. You can clip that up. We can do it. That definitely a clip. We ain't gonna, a clip. You know, Carlos Miller done rap too with DC. I watch him. Like Carlos, Chico, I watch him. Chico Bean. I watch him. They be off the top. They be I free. Wa I wrote some songs that you that 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 yeah, I wrote some songs <laughs> that you love that you didn't know it was me. Hey man, I got I, I signed that paper so I can't talk about it. Do you care to get them a, a rendition of what you have? Like me, me rap? Yeah, like like right now, like yeah, yeah. After the check clears. I mean. I'm <laughs> 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 but as a rapper, you're supposed to feel that way. 
Word. You, you see how when I said I'm the best podcast, we're like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> if you, hey, bro, if you believe somebody better than you in this For shit, sure. you ain't in the wrong game. Dang. If you don't believe that you'll watch anybody, whether whether or not you, it's true I mean, or not, that, that just you shit. better oh, know. We, we have to say that. You like, better, yeah. bro. But, I'm watching everybody, <laughs> and I'm saying it with my chest, and I truly believe that in my head. Okay. Name a podcast. I'm watching them. There's okay. not a podcast that I got so more we, hit records we, than When me. we say rap, we talking about bar for bar. We We're talking, talking about, song about songs. Songs for songs. Song, okay, songs song different. I was a song guy. Okay, songs I, I, I different. I made hits. Okay, word. We talking about lyrical, miracle, spherical? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can have that shit. They don't pay enough for that. Okay, word. No, I got hit records. Okay, hits. There's okay, not hits. a podcast that got more hit records than me. Okay. Not plaques, because okay. Joe Buck got more plaques than me. He got his one. All right, all right. Right? right. Gilly might have more records sold than me, because I was... You okay. know, I was an unknown okay. rapper. But okay. we're talking about hits. Yeah. You play your record, I play my record right after. You're not about to beat me in no verse. Okay, word. No, 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 nobody. Come come on, get it. Fat anybody, Joe, any Fat podcaster. Got a podcast too, now. Any podcaster that has over 100,000 followers, mm -hmm. DM me and we can set up the verses. That way you can promote and I can promote. We'll make it big. Fat Joe got a podcast. Watch too. his ass. <laughs> Yo, you out of you out of wash fuck, him. You out of fuck it. I'ma wash him. <laughs> oh my son. Okay, man. Let, let's <laughs> let's get you out of that smoke. Cause that that you know. See what how saying? competitive hip hop is. You gotta love Word. it, bro. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, question. Uh, what's the craziest thing that happened on your podcast with one of the girls? Cause on the Trigger Show, they be saying some crazy shit. Right. What's the What's the re most rememberable moment that you could just pinpoint? Like, oh, she said this, and then I went off. I got a couple, but you know, wow, what you so many, man. <laughs> it's so um, many. I think the craziest. I, I, first, I say the craziest. <laughs> the craziest moment was when a girl came on the show. She wasn't even on the show that day, and she says that she likes to sleep with uh, trannies. Mm. That was weird. Um, <laughs> now, as far as things that women have said, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh! Every week is something else. Um, I mean, you had a girl that said that she. Uh, wouldn't quit her job at Chick-fil-A unless a man paid her $20,000 a week for allowance. She was delusional. You had a girl that said that after a man took care of her for five years, uh, that she would uh, she would leave him in 30 days if he, if he had lost it all after taking care of her for four or five years, her and her kids, that she would leave him in 30 <laughs> days if he lost it all. I mean, you want me to keep going? It's something every week. I had a girl just <laughs> recently said that her job is was more important than her man could ever be. You know? What? Um, yeah, it just, you can't make this shit up, bro. Women really think <clears throat> like that. All right, so let's 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 start here, man. Um, because you know they also said some shit like they call continents countries, but that's yeah. another thing. <laughs> but we, <laughs> ah, oh, that's good. I remember that one. <laughs> I just probably roll a clip on that one, right. but yeah. Um, so are men toxic? Are men toxic? Are men toxic? I believe men can be toxic. I don't think we're naturally toxic in our own state. I I wait wait wait. What you mean? We, all right, so I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Okay. What you mean we're not naturally toxic? Not naturally toxic. I think uh, I think a man uh, can allow a woman's toxicity mm -hmm. to enter him okay. if he's not strong. So what 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 do you think makes a man toxic? Like what well, from a woman? Well, on a woman's vantage point, anything that a man does that they don't like is toxic. Mm -hmm. OK, so if, if a woman, if she wants you to only be with her, right, then you're toxic because sure. you don't want to just be with her. But that's doesn't that that's not the real meaning of toxic. We're talking about girl math. Oh, I could tell you about girl. math. Nah, let, let's yeah, talk girl nigga, math. Real, nigga OK, math. anything that a woman okay. doesn't want a man to do and he does it, he's toxic for it. Right. <laughs> so if it's like, yo. I don't want a relationship. I don't want to be exclusive. Oh, he's so fucking toxic. He's got all these bitches. I'd have told you what it was. Right. I was actually being untoxic by being honest that was and honest. truthful to you. Right? That, that ain't toxic. But that's... she's going to say it's toxic because okay, that's right. not the outcome that she wanted. But you manipulate her, though. Because I manipulate her. You probably you probably making love to her, right? You probably um being caring about what she got going on. Hmm. Hey, what you doing? Hmm. Hey, what's up, big head? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm you, you... securing the pussy. <laughs> but you don't want her to go do her thing. Well, we... men and women are different. Okay, so so we're we're wasps, girl. You know we're bees. We're women are wasps. Mm. So, so she so species. she can't go fuck off, but you can. No, she don't pay bills like me. 
She can pay when she pay bills. She can go fuck up. If Oprah Winfrey wanted to marry me today, right. and she got me in her big ass house, right, this billionaire lifestyle, she wanted to put hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever into my company, mm-hmm. and she's taking care of all my bills, all of my children's bills, would be able to put her life on the line for me. If somebody walks in here, I don't give a fuck if Oprah fucked Stedman on Monday and Gwen on Tuesday came to see me on Wednesday. I'm gonna shut the fuck up, right? Mm-hmm. Women don't do that though, and that's the difference. There's only one of us that's willing to take everything that we have to give to the other person. So for the betterment of them, it's mm. men to women. Women don't do that. Women's wait, money wait, is for wait. them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So that's what's <clears throat> different. But wait, though. Wait, I'm listening. You can't. Why she have to do all those things? Like you mean? invest 100000 here, do this, do that. Because why? that's what I have to do. Okay, I mean, but wait, If she wants wait. to do what I do, she has to pay what I pay, correct? Wait, though. Let's, 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 let's dial it back. I'm listening. How about she matching your bag? And y'all, y'all 50 50. 50 50. A man that's 50 50 shouldn't have time to cheat. Okay. I agree with that. Okay. If you 50 50, you don't got time to cheat. Women got time to cheat. We're talking about, we're talking about men that are protecting and providing mm-hmm. at a high level. The type of men that all these women want to screw. Right. I don't believe they're going to be monogamous. I'm paying for <laughs> everything. What am I getting <clears throat> for paying your bills? What am I getting in re- the same pre-owned cat that you gave the last <laughs> nigga in the Nissan Sentra? Yeah. I drive a Bentley, a Jeep, and two goddamn Mercedes Benzes. What am I getting for taking you out of departments? But wait, this will, this will lead to my next question, okay. right? <clears throat> Can a successful man be faithful? Most definitely. If he's stupid. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> Why would a man with okay. more accept less? Mm. If I've worked 20, 30 years of my life to become a high value person, mm-hmm. I've went through the mud. I told you my, my, my beginning. I came from a, literally a city with no yeah, stoplights. Yeah. I had to get up out of there. I had to fall down several times. I told you earlier, I failed more times than people have tried. There was no woman there. There was no woman when I was running around Virginia in the goddamn city with no stoplights. Mm-hmm. There was no woman there when I failed at being a rapper, being a radio host, being everything. There was no woman there. There was no woman there when I was building my first studio when I overspent $150,000. Right. There wasn't no woman there. So now that I figured it out, I'm going to say, oh, well, I got all this. Now let me accept. But wait, the guy that, that hold on, let me finish. Go ahead. I got all this. Okay. So now let me accept what the guy at Mc, at McDonald's gets, which mm. is some pre-owned cat. No. <laughs> cool. It's not a it's a bad deal. Okay. Okay. I, I can afford more. So I should get more. If you got enough money right now right. to go buy you a Rolls Royce, are you about to go in there and buy you a Toyota Tercel? Hell no. Nah. No. You're gonna go get what you can afford or get what you want at least, right? Right. You're not going to get what is given to you. Hey, we got this Toyota for sale, for sale. No, you're going to get what you want. So why, if I work to the point where I can afford Mm -hmm. to have multiple women or multiple children and all of my kids are in private school and taken very good care of, then why would I accept less? But you can go buy a Rolls. You never answered that question, sir. I'm not not saying accept less, right? You never answered that question. But wait, wait. I'm not saying accept (laughs) less. Why would you? I'm not saying I wouldn't. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. But I'm saying, can they be faithful? The question is, can they be faithful, right? They can, and, for and, sure. And, and we every gotta, man can be faithful, brother. Right, but but I'm a successful man. Every man can be, can be faithful. We're we're complete. I don't. Okay, so let me let me break it down because I was giving you some clips. Because because you're bait. talking about I was giving you some clip bait. You're talking about uh, getting a girl who don't have nothing going on. How about I go get a Benz right. and go get another Benz? Right. Like I'm a Benz, she a Benz. We both we big right. body Benz. So I'm not saying that men can't. There's plenty of there's plenty of faithful men out here. Come on, these women don't want to fuck them. These women <laughs> treat them wrong. These women ghost them. These women stand them up. These women fuck off with the alpha bad boy nigga behind their backs. I'm not saying that there's not faith. There's tons of faithful men out here right. that would love a decent woman. And guess what happens? He gets done dirty. Mm. He gets done terrible. She cheats on him. She ghosts him. She she treats him like he's less of nothing. He talks to him crazy. And guess what she uh, guess what she goes and do, does? She goes out and tries to get that big dog nigga that got all the hoes. 
mm. and she chased after him. Have you ever seen a woman that you might have been interested in and she act like she ain't on you, but you see her with the nigga, the, the nigga that got all the bitches. She chasing after him. A woman rather be. <laughs> Listen to me, y'all. This is a clip too. A woman rather be a part. A woman rather share a rich man than be a broke man's everything. Damn. A woman rather share this rich man Damn. than be a broke man's everything. And, and, and the broke man is just the man that's building. <laughs> He's on his way to becoming the rich man, but a lot of women don't want to go through that process with him. So when he's been the broke man, right. and she didn't want to be his everything, and he went through the mud and went through the failures and went through the trials and tribulations, and she didn't tap in. When he finally gets through that finish line to becoming the rich nigga, right. you think he's about to go and be with that bitch that wouldn't be with him when he was broke just by herself? You might tap it, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> there you go. But it's not going to be a monogamous relationship. So to answer your question, if successful men can be monogamous, all successful men were monogamous before they were successful, and them bitches didn't want to fuck with them. By the time they get past that finish line, hey, because women want to fuck the winners, right? Yeah. Hey, bitch, I won. But there's 20 other women around here. I mean, the b bitches love broke niggas, too. You know what I'm saying, yeah, broke niggas got the best. I gave the best dick when I was a broke nigga, boy. Yeah. That's all I had to give her. And me, I'm the president of the BNA. You know what that means? What's that? Broke nigga association. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've and, all been broke, boy. And and, and, and 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 the women love broke niggas. Let's start that, man. So, but I, I I totally agree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Are you a part of the BNA? Am I a part of the B? I I, I probably am. I'm retired from that. You retired? Uh, broke nigga okay. association. Yeah. Right. I ain't been broke in a while. You I said, have been broke a right? lot of times though. Okay. Yeah, okay. for sure. You support my movement and all that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I would, you would have to tell me what the BNA means. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not exactly a broke nigga advocate either. Though I'm just standing on the brokenness because it's a lot of it's a lot of flexing out here. I don't think I, I I think that I think that a man that is being honest about his financial situation and understanding that it that is the first step for him changing it. So if that's the case, then yes. Even because, if I got it, I don't got it. But but you know, I like that. <laughs> but but if we are becoming content with being broke and staying in the same place and not progressing and not further along, then nah, I can't fuck with that. There's niggas that have DM me since 2020 mm -hmm. talking about a fifty dollar song review and still ain't got no money in 2024. Still trying to get me to sit. I don't want to talk to them niggas. They be an A, bro. No, nah, you don't want to be those guys. <laughs> those niggas are, are are a waste of sperm cells. <laughs> they a part nah, of the association. I'm not. A, I'm not a broke nigga advocate. I'm. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm a building man advocate. Okay. If, if we put instead of broke, we put building. I'm with you okay. because. Every Everybody has to go through their process. Yeah, you you the janitor right now. But brother, <laughs> five years from now, you about to own the whole goddamn building. Why? Because you are putting forth the effort, the time, energy, and the work ethic to make it happen. I'm with them guys. Th right. Those are the guys I speak for. Okay. The niggas that just sit around playing Madden and know they broke and know they lights is going out and got their old lady out there working and shit. Y'all niggas is the ones that's making these masculine women that I got to push the button on. Woo. So if you if you know that you broke and you don't get up and go do something about it, nigga, I'm not your advocate. I'm not for you. I don't want to talk to you either. Get out of my DM too, my nigga. I am for the people that are trying to progress and move forward to a better future and tomorrow. I'm with that. You with that? Okay, we're for sure. <laughs> they just sit on my horn. <laughs> All right, so can a woman? Can a woman? Go out with her single friends and be faithful. This is one of your questions. I take it from you. Can a woman go out with her single friends and be faithful? Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she technically can. I mean, anything is possible. Is it likely? Okay. Over a period of time, no. Right. Because let's put it like this: If I'm around four scammers all mm -hmm. the time, come on, would you leave your credit card or social security number around me? Hell no. If all my partners is scammers and flip, hold on, it's not different, man. We're not having a trigger alert conversation here. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if you answer the question, if I'm, if I, all my partners, him, 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 and him, they all scammers. They just bust checks down and, and, and credit fraud and, and identity theft, right? And I say, hey, I don't do that. I don't, what they do don't mean it's on me. Right, Would right, you right. leave your social security card around me? Let's start. Of down. course not. Exactly. So why? Does a man, woman think 
that if you are around four hoes, mm -hmm. that I'm going to leave my prized possession, my woman, mm -hmm. around these four hoes. It's just a matter of time before their indoctrine, their, 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 you know, their thought process soils and contaminates my woman. Because mm -hmm. guess what happens when you go on a girl's trip? All right, cool. My woman's not a hoe. Her, her four homegirls, she want to go over there with Floyd Mayweather. She want to go off with Drake. She want to go with 50 Cent. Come on. And this one want to go over here to the goddamn content, the OnlyFans content party. Talk to me. My home, now my g girl's like, well, we're on a girl's trip. I'm just going. Yeah. I got to stay with my girl. You know how to get, I can't leave my girl. Come on. Come on. So your homegirl is getting blown out on on camera for an OnlyFans shoot. Yeah. I can't leave, and you in the, you just in the lobby just chilling. You just chilling. No, ain't man. no way, ain't no nah. way. So it's the same situation. If I can't hang around four scammers, and you leave your credit card and <laughs> social security card around me, then you can't hang around four hoes. Oh God. <clears throat> I ugly money. Uh, yes, sir. Do you need a woman? You know, you bash a lot of women. Um, you have you bash, have no, no bash. You no. have no respect. We don't for bash. Them. We don't you bash. Sit on them. You drop. We gotta. We gotta stop. Them. We we bash, you, you bashing, bashing. Bashing. Bashing is Do not. You the need word. a woman, man. Talk ba to well, people. first and foremost, bashing is not the word. <laughs> Telling the truth is different than bashing. Bashing a woman would be like, you stupid bitch. Okay. That's bashing. That's that's bashing for sure. If I sit there and say, hey, that's stupid. That's stupid. That's not bashing. That's me telling you, I'm teaching you. I don't bet. I love women. I'm a girl dad. <laughs> I got four girls. <clears throat> do you, do and do you... I need a woman? Yes. Okay. Why do you think that I try to educate women? Because on. I one day want to marry one of these. Okay. I one day, I, the black woman is the most amazing creature in the world. Sometimes. sometimes. Anything that you give her, she can create from it. She can multiply. If you give a, a woman sperm, she will give you a child. Come if on. you give a woman a house, she will give you a home. Come on. If you give your woman your check, she will give you an empty bank account. Come it's on. just ah. <laughs> it, it, But what I'm saying is the black women are amazing. Come and on. so when I see black women who are queens, not acting queen-like, as their brother, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell them, hey, queen, you're not acting queen by hanging out the window with your ratchet ass friend. The Come same on. things that I say to women, you understand that grandma says the same exact thing? Oh, grandma say whatever. Gra the grandma <laughs> says, grandma tells women the same thing that I tell women. I just say it a little, I just say it masculine. Don't be out here being fast. Okay. Don't be out here with your business in the street. Stop goddamn hoeing around. Keep your legs closed. Put some clothes on. These are the same things, the same, the same knowledge that grandma gives a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's coming from a man, they want to say it's bashing. Well, grandma bashed them bitches then. Mm. Grandma was bashing you hoes then. If I'm bashing bitches, I don't bash women. I love women. Okay. So at the end of the day, if I see a beautiful queen and she's not acting queenly, I'm going to say something like, hey, that's not what we're doing here. Fact. You should maybe rethink how you think. Because at the end of the day, my platform has a bigger meaning of the fact that I want men and women to come together create two parent households, generational wealth, and live happily ever after and leave something for these kids for the next generation besides a goddamn bill. And last time I checked, success is a team sport. So without a goddamn team, meaning your woman, it's going to be harder to be successful. Put like this, you in the state of financial success that you're in right now, would you date a woman that works at Chick-fil-A? Most definitely. I'd pull up in my Bentley mm -hmm. right now. If this young lady or going to look like her, and I like what I saw, and she was in the drive through <laughs> and I like what I saw through them dicky paints, because you know if you get she got ass in them dicky paints, yeah, yeah, that yeah, means different. she thick as fuck. It hit different. She got ass in work paints, <laughs> and if I like what I saw in them dicky paints, I'd be like, hey, baby, what time you get off? Hey, five o'clock, I'm gonna be out here. Come on, get your ass in this car. You gonna let her keep her job or like you, she quitting? Like what's going yeah, on? Yeah, no. Nah, well, I mean, if she if she chooses to keep her job, if if if, if she becomes, if if we become her in a relationship, mm -hmm. the most of the financial burden is on me. Right. That's something that I that I'm that I'm gonna take. So she's not gonna have to 
work at that job if she wants to. I would rather her, honestly, I would rather her appropriate her time in something that we own. Seeing facts and matter, I would ask her, hey, what are you into? She says, oh, well, I'm into, you know, uh, cosmetology. All right, cool. Well, I got 50,000 square feet over here. Let me go ahead and build you a salon suite right so we can market and promote you. And that's something that we can pass down to our kids or whatever, rather than working at these folks shit, slaving for 40 hours a week for $40,000 a year <clears throat> for 40 years and to retire broke. I'm cool on that. So right. I would rather empower my woman. But that, but that goes that goes in order for me to find a woman that is worth that she has to be acting queenly the hell i'm gonna buy a bitch a business and she out this motherfucker suck a dick on the internet <laughs> <laughs> all i'm about her is some mouthwash come on let's start See what I'm saying? <laughs> and it, it's not bashing it's just the real i am i am willing to put my life on the line and, 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 and take your children if you have children as my own if you want all of these perks all i, I need you to meet the requirements baby Put it like this though. Yeah, it is. Do you have a do you have a woman? Do I have a woman? Yeah. Oh man, I don't talk about my personal situations. <laughs> I mean, because you know, you do know, I have do me like me? Yeah, like you got me. one Ooh, woman. Man. You successful guy. You talk about men being successful and having multiple women. Look do in my you, eyes. Do you have one? I got you. you have I'm listen. I'm, listen. Look talk into to my me. eyes. Come on. Do I have a woman? Mm -mm -mm. Ladies. Okay. Look into my eyes. Look into his eyes. Do I have a woman? <laughs> I don't need. I don't need know. Of course, <laughs> brother. Of okay. course. Okay. Of course, I have. Uh, I have uh, very special individuals in my life. S's. I said uh, the S. For sure, S's. S's. Because S's. certain women are for certain things. Would it ever be one? Meaning one woman like me be with one woman at a time, like in intimately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. no. Why? Why would I ever do that? I mean, what? If I go broke, then maybe. Why you got to go broke for that? Yeah, or Oprah. <laughs> if a woman take care of all my bills, yeah. My price of monogamy is $2.5 because that's what I did last year. So if you want to be equally yoked, my price for monogamy is two point five. You got to come with what I come with. That's what I did last year. So if she got two point five, then I'll consider it. You haven't ran into a, a successful woman because I've ran into several successful women. Why haven't you shot your shot? And if you did, how how you think that would go with two successful people like with yourself? Well, I I mean my last relationship, my my ex girlfriend's a millionaire. Okay, okay. I invested in her business. She has a she has a collection agency. Right. No, I, I, investment is not tricking, young lady. Understand the difference. Tricking is me paying you for some pussy. Investing is me building with you and putting money into a business that can actually be passed down, a tangible object. I don't trick. But no, I've, I've, I've had several. I, I, think, I, think, I think a lot of times successful women think that men don't like them or, or, no, or we're intimidated by them. Mm -hmm. No, it's just the fact that the matter is your bank account, I don't have access to, so it's not that important to me. Facts. If you're not going to use your money to take care of me and mine, then why the fuck should I care about it? Mm. My money is for us. Her money is for her. So I don't understand why successful women think that men should care that the fact that she, I don't give a fuck if she makes 50,000 or 500. If I don't have access to it, it's none of my business. Hmm. And that's what it is. It's not the, if, if that successful woman is submissive, and when she walks through this door, if she's feminine when she walks through this door, if she's in her soft girl energy when she walks through this door, I'm a rock with her. You feel what I'm saying? If that broke bitch is motherfucking masculine and talking out of turn and be disrespectful, then she going back to the pot me. <laughs> I don't care what her financial situation is. Right, the right. things that I'm looking for in a woman aren't measured by money. That's what women are looking for from me because they value provisions. They want to make sure I got I got money. You, they're worried about our future. Right. They're worried about, hey, if I'm with him, am I, am I going to be taken care of? Am I going to be stable? Am I going to be secure? Okay, cool. So you, you women worry about our money because of the fact that they have access to it. Because they know if I know, you know, if I'm making $2.5 million a year, then you know that we're at least going to have a decent sized house. Your kids are going to have food to eat and you're going to have a car to drive because your little kid keep on growing, breaking down. But if you know that I ain't making well, eh, a little here, a little there, the, the level of uncertainty is something that women don't tend to like. 
So they usually go for people that are a little more stable. Mm. Sometimes they go for the attractiveness. Your name for is sure. ugly. When they so, young. When they're young. When they young. Older they ain't they ain't going. I think I think as women get older they start realizing that attraction isn't is isn't the biggest given it it still matters but i don't think it is as important uh, attraction to a 35 year old woman mm -hmm. is less important than to a 21 year old chick 21 year old girl wants to screw the guy because he's got curly hair and hazel eyes right or whatever right, right. but when he turns 35 and they're both 35 and this nigga don't got a pot to piss and she's going to be repulsed <laughs> by him I don't give a fuck. She don't give a fuck what color his eyes are. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna Atlanta go. Though, bro. She that ends up. She ends up getting a big back nigga with, with with receding hairline that can pay the bills. That's that's Atlanta though. That's everywhere. Nah, that shit ain't like that. I'm telling you, it's no In women the country, around. Say, there's not a lot of women that like broke men, brother. Nah, this Atlanta, bro. You, you you in the wrong. You got to go down a little little further I'm down not, south. I'm not from Atlanta. I'm, I'm 42 years old. I, I've only lived in Atlanta since 2015. I've seen it. No women don't like broke niggas, bro. They don't stay very long. They you will try. To, they old, will try man. to. They will try to. A lot of them will try to stay down. Right. A lot of them will try, but it's just a matter of time where this doesn't make sense. How can you think about it like this, brother? Say you broken on your ass. Say this is just just for instance. This is your girlfriend. All right, mm -hmm. cool. Y'all been together for two years. You've been struggling for two years. She done slept in the car with your ass when you was homeless, right? She done stayed right. down. Two years later, you still ain't figured it out, right? All right, here a nigga like me come. I pull up in the bin, <laughs> right? She ain't washed her ass in two days or whatever because you ain't got no place to stay. Come on. How hard is it for me to get her in my car if I like her? It's easy. Exactly. But that's pimping, though. Cause she coming right back. <laughs> no, she, she she may come back. But how hard is it for me to acquire something yeah. that is supposed to be yours? That ain't my chick. Yeah. It's yours. He got to take one for the team, right? So 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 this is mine. I'm gonna take one for the team. Now they go get that money. She telling you the answer, dog. That pimping. <laughs> now, now I'm pimping. Women don't like broke niggas, bro. Now I'm pimping. I gotta take one for the team. You gonna take one for the? I ain't take. He <laughs> <laughs> baby, go get that money, baby. Is he pimping or he simping? Is he is he pimping or is he simping? <laughs> no, I've been I've been there too. I've been there's been a time in my life where all I had to give a woman was sexual pleasure. There's been a time in my life where all I had to rely on is dick for a place to stay. And right. that dick that I gave that woman was next level. It was fucking Jason <laughs> Lyric. Now, have you ever seen the movie Jason Lyrics where they get down there and the flowers start growing and shit and the fireworks? Because it's all I got, baby. All I got is just wood for you. You know what I'm saying? There's been a time in my life. We all have as young men. That's why a lot of these older women like that young meat because they want to pound them out. But... Well... Well, young, younger women have always liked older men because women mature faster than us. If me and you are at the same age, if I'm 21 and you're 21, I am not in the same place as you mentally, um, thought process, career-wise, just, just mentality-wise. I'm not. Um, you know, it, it, it's just a natural, you know, that's just how things work. I believe that when women, older women, date younger men, um, that's because they've been... Uh, it's gonna sound fucked up. Oh, it is. Come what it on, is. now get to um, him. <laughs> get to him. He waiting it. on it. <laughs> I believe when when older women date younger men, that's because all of the older men have passed them by. They leftovers. Not meaning that they're not beautiful, because black don't crack unless you do crack. So don't do crack. Beautiful. <laughs> Some of these older women look better than these younger women, but a lot of older men and older women don't see eye to eye because if she's 35, 40 years old and still single, there's obviously something there why she can't hook one in. Right. And she, and you ever heard the term, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. She's been this way for two decades. It's gonna be, it's gonna be extremely hard to get her to say a woman over talks you and she talks when you talk. And it's gonna be extremely hard to tell somebody that's been doing that for 15 years not to do it. Or say she call you a bro, or she, or she, or she, or she, or she come, or she comes, she comes with masculine energy anytime she doesn't like something. It's gonna be extremely hard to to train her or or to teach her how to be different. But that 25 year old, you know, fresh out of college, 
just want to see the world. You showing her new shit. This is all an amusement park for her. So she following you through the amusement park of life. Right. You never been on a roller coaster like this, baby. Come on, get on. Now strap it in. <laughs> but if I'm going with this older chick that done been 17 times to Six Flags, I know how to do it. I've been on this shit 17 times. <laughs> so what's going to be the more enjoyable experience? The fact that this younger woman is totally intrigued at the experience that I'm providing for her or this older woman who has did it with 17 other niggas over the past two years, and she like, what else is there? Right. She's gonna be harder to please. You ever took a young chick to a restaurant? You take a young chick, I'm talk, when I say young, I'm, I'm, I can only speak for 25 and up, okay? Yeah, 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 you take yeah. a young chick to a three-star restaurant. Say I take her to <clears throat> Longhorn. She can be like, ooh, I love Longhorn. For sure. That shit good. She should like she liking that, right? <laughs> you take a 35, 40 year old chick to Longhorn. Nah. <laughs> nah. Uh, we can't do Nobu, really. It's not <laughs> SDK. Enzo's at least. I don't eat these kind of spots. <laughs> Bitch, you was eating Longhorn and you was eating Golden Corral after church like everybody else. What, what's wrong with that? <laughs> but they've experienced it so much because they've been that young chick and whatever happened when they were younger, they couldn't hook that guy and keep that guy. And sometimes it be the nigga fault, ladies. I get that out because, you know, older women, they furious right now. Sometimes it be the nigga fault. For but sure. I only truly believe there's only two reasons for real that a woman should ever leave her man. He being domestically violent to her. Okay. Right? Okay. Or he's broke and chooses not to change that situation. If the man is not providing for you and a man is not protecting you, he's doing the one that's beating, those are the only two reasons. No, why would a woman leave because of cheating? You, what, you gonna go to another? So a woman you shouldn't You ask a question leave. and you're trying to get an answer, a masculine woman, and you're talking. Why would a woman leave a man that's cheating on her to go find another, another man, man that's, that's cheating, cheating on more her. on her. He just cheat better. <laughs> he just he cheat quieter. quieter. Have you ever met a man? Have you ever met a man <laughs> that pays bills and only slept with you? Have you ever met one? Hello. No bitch has. Exactly. <laughs> so why would you leave this man that's paying bills? Hold on. You leave this man that's paying bills because he cheated to go to a nigga that don't pay as much bills and he cheat better. <laughs> And you got to start over. You what's not what's over. not okay? Who who says it wasn't okay? Where in the Bible does it say that it should be one man and one woman? Where? What scripture? What scripture? Please do. <laughs> All the kings in the Bible had multiple wives and multiple concubines, man. Do your research. I ain't saying, and listen, there is no commandment where it should say that. There's no way to take commandment where it says, thou shalt not have hoes. That is something that the they Western, the, that is something that the Eastern, adultery. that is something that European people have instilled in black women mm. to keep the black family apart. We, in them African jungles, baby, we was polygamous. You would have been, now I'm not saying that a man should have multiple women, meaning multiple hoes and no, no. Really, realistically, it's not even supposed to be, you supposed to be my side chick. You're supposed to be my, my second wife or my third wife some polygamy shit but of course a lot of you modern women won't go for that so you settle for the side chick and mm -hmm. i don't even understand why women have such a problem with being side chicks i mean well well they're man having side chicks because there's a probably a point in your life where you were a side chick if you were sleeping with the guy that was not your man then you're his side chick Right? So women have a, no problem with being another man's side chick. And if your mother wasn't married to your father, then your mom was a side chick. And then they get mad when their man has a side chick when they were just a side chick. <laughs> a lot of women hate themselves. They've been raised on side chick activities. A lot of these women wouldn't be born without side chicks. Side chick culture is a thing. <laughs> a lot of women. Tell the me where to lie at in the comments. Tell me where to lie now. A I believe that a woman can be able to do everything that a man can do when she does everything that a man can do. Meaning, if we're protecting and providing like I would, then hey. I already gave you the Oprah comment, baby. You want me to break it down to you again? If you are paying my bills, you think I'm gonna give a fuck if you fucking that nigga? It costs me $25,000 a week to live. 
my lifestyle. It costs me 25 grand a week to live. Do you think that I care? If you paying $100,000 a month to take care of me and my five kids, you think I give a fuck about you getting some outside dick? Don't bring no babies and no diseases home. I ain't gonna trip. I ain't gonna like it, but I ain't gonna trip. See, that's what men and women, that's what men and women miss it. Cause see, I pay your bills, you still gonna be bitching at me, and you ain't gonna let me, you ain't gonna let me goddamn, you ain't gonna let me cheat in peace. I ain't put it in your face. Ain't no bitch came to you talking about I gotta come to you as a woman. I ain't brought I you no diseases you and I ain't goddamn <laughs> brought no babies home. What the fuck is you mad about? Your <laughs> bills are paid. When I found you, you was needing five hundred dollars on the fifth before you got evicted. <laughs> I abolished all those goddamn problems in your life. What the hell is wrong with me going to get some cat on Tuesday? You need to pack me a bag, a lunch bag to go <laughs> over that bitch, man. <laughs> we outside, man. Let's start. <laughs> Tell me where to lie at. Oh, my goodness, man. All right. But you say you ain't going to like it. But Tell me where to lie. Yeah. So really Oprah, Oprah can cheat on me. She, she got more money Oprah's, than me. She not attractive though. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like you think your you, kids, you think your ki bro, so you can your kids spend six. attraction? Your you, kids can't spend attraction when they get older. Your kid, you can't pass down attraction to them kids. Them kids look, need businesses. Check, check this double standard out. Listen, women can fuck ugly men, right? But I can't fuck an ugly bitch. You young. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you mean to tell him, wait a minute, hold on. So you you, you, you take it down, Whoopi. Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, God. What's the incentive? Is there an incentive? She she you damn near Oprah. Money. She damn near Oprah, too. No, I mean, well, I, I have money, so that's not really a thing. But you ain't got you ain't got Whoopi money. For sure not. <laughs> I'm saying, like, you, you you just put Oprah in there. So you just walk past Whoopi, you can get hard. Mm, oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, huh? Uh, I, 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 I would shoot. I would keep, keep it peeing. Nah, I keep it peeing. Don't, don't, don't be, don't be lying I, on yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ew, yeah. I, I, I don't think that I would. I don't think that I would be attracted to her. And she ain't shade on great pussy hair. I don't think I'd be attracted to her. She's not an attractive woman to me. Okay, for sure. But let's keep it all the way hunted, fellas. There's always there's been them them foes and fives that come at the house after three o'clock. We call them vampires. They only come out at night. You know what I'm saying? They come to suck everything that's in their sight. <laughs> or whatever. Hey, man, them vampire chicks got the niggas through a lot of shit. As a man that calls you. Whoopi is another level, though. That's like one, two. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother level. But three or four, yeah, in my, in my, in my, you know, in my time, I've definitely, I definitely took some goddamn booger wolves down through there. I can't do it again. And it'd be some great cat, too. Some of the, some of the best pussy come from the ugliest women. <laughs> If she got a little bit of bulldog in her face. That's some good pussy. No, my Normally, God. yeah. She wear she wear mismatched <laughs> socks. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you when you, how you know a girl got a, some good pussy, right? Okay, talk to me. She got a little bulldog in her face. I'm talking about she ain't all the way ugly. She's a little bit. She got hit with the ugly stick about eleven times. She got mismatched socks on. She got some leggings that got a hole in it. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? And she got a goddamn hoodie on. That's some good pussy coming through your door. You better know what to do with it. And I'm talking about <laughs> she about a four and a five in the face, and she got a little ass with a little bit of goddamn fupa in the front. Right. That's some good. It's some. It's a whole bunch of good pussy up under okay, that fupa. What about a big girl? I, I, don't, I don't hear so many people talk about a big girl. Who fuck with them? Big girls got great cat. For sure. Big girl, a lot of a lot of big girls are way cleaner. Right then people make them seem to be, because you know, a lot of people try to make this weird thing that big girls ain't clean. Bro, that's some of the best smelling cat, best smelling women in the that's world. Right. It's a big woman, oh, cause she takes that time Can to make sure. Can you tell what she just ate as you down there? Like you smell a little aroma from KFC or a little McDonald's. No, like, no, a, no, 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 no. You don't no, get a little no, taste no. of the food. No, nah, big girls, big girls be having, man, that shit be smelling like goddamn okay. strawberries and, and, and flowers, man. And they don't out, eat none of that, they eat. I ain't saying that. I'm not. See, see, you're trying to make me bash women. I don't bash women. I love women, as you can see. I just I only correct women. Correction is not bashing. <laughs> this nigga need his soundboard I've seen, I've so seen, bad. I've, 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 there's plenty of slimmer women that have great personal hygiene as well. It's a case by case basis. But I'm try. I'm here to debunk the fact that if a woman is bigger, that she doesn't smell great. No, that's cow. There's plenty yeah. of beautiful. Beautiful, thick ass, big booty, big, big belly ass women that clean Hello. as hell. It smell like goddamn water. And, oh God! You know that when that pussy smell like nothing. Oh God! Whew. Okay, <laughs> you have a flashback. Hold up, my hey, buddy. man, that, that, that with, nothing pussy. <clears throat> with a man that call himself ugly, right. do you think a woman can really love you? Well, the money is ugly. 
Um, <laughs> not exactly me. Um, but you know that is not that exactly is uh, every woman has her opinion uh, and can have her opinion of it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Some people like it, but uh, yeah, no, I, I've been loved several times in my life. Um, I've been loved. And it, it was funny because I used to lie as a young man. Right, right. Okay. I probably lied to every woman in my life till I was 35. Mm. Then I started telling the truth. Goddamn. That's when the chaos started. Hold on. Women, women, I'm 42, Quinn. I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look yeah, like what I've been look, through. Look, 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 look at you. Look at you. Watch yourself now. So, um, <laughs> as a young man, I had to lie to women. Come on. Because if I told her the truth, she would leave. Mm. I didn't have enough leverage to keep her there. Mm. I won't pay any bills. Come on. I couldn't do. You know Damn. what I'm saying? I ain't had a nice car, a nice crib. I didn't have a lot of wisdom in my younger years to be able to put her on game, right? right? So all I'm banking on is the fact that this woman likes my company and this wood that I'm giving her. Mm -hmm. And the fact that if she knew that I was giving this wood to someone else, it's she over. would be out the door. It's over. I didn't have enough leverage. That's why men lie. Because if they tell you the truth, a woman will lock, walk out the door. Now, at 35, I got to a point in my life where I could tell the truth. I'm like, I got enough leverage. That motherfucker ain't going nowhere. Oh, God. Right? Let's start that. You staying in this five-bedroom house with me, or you want to go back to the pot means? Come on. Come on. She don't want to go sleep on the air mattress anymore. Mm. Right? Okay. She also loves the fact that I'm willing to invest in her, not just financially, but mentally as well. I'm willing to teach you things and show you different things. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start telling the truth, just understand that a lot of not majority of women are not really <laughs> wanting the truth they want you to tell them what they want to hear right so when you start telling them the truth just be prepared for the ramifications that come with it she's probably going to talk to you different or she's going to act different she's not going to be as friendly or happy as and, 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 and she's not going to be ignorance is bliss and you have you have robbed her of her ignorance because you actually listened to her when she said that she wants you to just tell her the truth so it's a, it's a it's it's a pro and a con. There's 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 pros that there's pros to telling the truth and there's cons. Mm. The pros, hey, I told you what it was. The cons, she gonna raise some hell. <laughs> All right, so check this out. So tell these people like about this new venue that you got. Um, it's a club spot, restaurant, all right. in one podcast, it's everything. Spot. So explain to the people what, where we at and uh, like break it down to them. Uh, we're at, at Club Atmosphere. Sports bar, restaurant, and, and, and event center. Um, also the home of Ugly Money Studios. So, um, yeah, it's 50,000 square feet. We have three different club locations in one building. We have a podcast studio, recording studio, all in one spot. Everything to deal with the entertainment industry is here at Club Atmosphere. Um, it's, it's just time to do it bigger. It's just time to do it better. Um, shouts out my brother Mason. You know, it's one of his brainchilds, and, you know, he brought me into it, and it was just a match made in heaven. And so we're extremely – we haven't even opened yet, so we're extremely excited about what it's, what's, uh, what it's entailing. And by the time that this drops, we will have had a casting call for Boosie's new mm -hmm. movie, Twins, and we got a lot of other hot things coming. The official uh, opening date is uh, New Year's, so uh, New Year's. it's going to be great. As oh, you can hear so people singing in the background, it's all something going on. Y'all ain't opening this to New Year's. So what? Y'all ain't opening this to New Year's. Yeah, yeah. We have a soft opening on Black Friday, and the grand opening is New Year's Eve. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, looking around, man, it's a lot of faces. It's a lot of legendary people yeah. on the walls. Who? He Yeah, he's over there painting right now. Right. So who is who is doing? Is it one guy doing all this painting, or you got multiple people involved? Oh, it's different. It's different. It's different artists. It's about three different artists. Or okay. whatever. I mean, this is a lot of lot of square footage. So, uh, yeah, you know, we got we got our some of our hip hop greats. Majority of our hip hop greats, uh, you know, dead and gone. You know, there's Mo three over there. You got, you know, you got Dolph over here. You got, you know, Jazzy Jeff. You got you got some of everybody on these walls. Um, all because they made their their impact in the culture, and we just wanted to show show love. And as you can see on the VIP sections, right. there is a. Uh, a lot of the biggest ATL brands right. that have that have come across through ATL culture, they're on the VIP uh, the VIP sections just to it. signify our respect for what they brought to the game. I ain't even see that, dog. Mm -hmm. You got like Gangsta Grills over here, Big Cat Records, Big Cat Records, like, you got K17 over there. You got the Bull over here. Yep, we got come a bunch on. of them. 
this is crazy, man. Like, so what what goes behind the decision making on like who to put on the wall and who not? Cause like shit, man, my somebody might feel left out. You know what I'm saying? It's always gonna be somebody left <clears> out, right? Come on. But you know, when you got fifty thousand square feet, you got enough room to add them. <laughs> so <laughs> if somebody on. feels left out, uh <laughs> just come on down the atmosphere and we'll get it done. <laughs> it, will, will you be on the wall? Um <laughs> to be determined. Let's start there. To be, be, determined. <laughs> to be determined. To be determined. Okay. 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 We'll All right. So, um, last couple questions, man. Uh, yes, f- for someone who want to start a media platform, right? What kind of advice would you give them? Consistency is the biggest, the biggest thing. You have to do this shit every day. You got to do it the days you don't want to do it. You have to be consistent. It's not going to happen overnight. No, your first interview is not going to go viral. My first interview did fifty-two views. Mm. And I promoted it all month Come on. with all my heart. I posted it on Facebook, on Instagram, over and over and over again. It did 52 views, bro. Mm. Um, it's a consistency thing. By, by interview five, long as you can do 52 views on interview one and do 55 views by interview five, then you're on the right direction. On the right and you have to fall in love with the process of growing, of growing gradually. It's not an overnight thing. This is not a quick come up. It's a consistency thing. But what you will see is the more consistent you, you go, you'll have that big break interview and it probably won't be, or big break uh, content, and it probably won't be the one that you think is gonna be big, right? Mm-hmm. It'll be something random. And then everybody will go back to your back catalog and appreciate the work that you've already done. And now you got a fan. And so it's just, that's why I say, you, you know, you start, you start your catalog now. You start with episode one. And just make sure that you do it every day, because the person that works hard is going to win in this in this game. That's a fact. <clears throat> now, for someone who's who's doing all that, you right. know, saying they're doing, they're being consistent, they're dropping every day, um, but they're just not getting the the support that they should have. You know, saying going the duration that they yeah, have. Fuck support. Boom. You don't need support. Okay. Fuck support. I say fuck support because when people look for support, that's when they don't get it. Double down on you. Believe in you. Do what you do, regardless if they like it or not, regardless if they watch it or not. I had this, this saying that went viral. I said, I, I might see you in my views, but I never see you in my likes. Mm. They don't share, uh, I don't see you in my comments. They don't share nothing. They don't pull up to nothing I got going. Stop telling these folk you fuck with me. Come on. And, uh, you, yeah, you, it's not going to happen like that. You got to believe in you. You have to give people something to support. A lot of times when people are asking for support or believe that they deserve support, that's because you haven't done the proper work to garner support. I don't have to ask for some. I don't have to ask niggas, please watch my shit. No, I put out so much dope shit that niggas is going to watch it. Come on. But then during the time the niggas won't watch it, I was like, please watch my shit. <laughs> so once you get past that and just, and just do the work, just put the hours in. Put the 10,000 hours of, 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 of dedication in it. There is no shortcut. The only shortcut to success is just do the fucking work. Start today. Start right now. Go. That's the shortcut. It is no other hidden secret to this shit. Bro, I dropped over 500 pieces of content on my YouTube page before, you know, I really started making real money. Right. Right. Get ready. That's real. Now- It'll happen. You just gotta continue to do it. Now, is Ugly Money doing this himself? Who is he editing these videos? Is he editing the clips? Who is behind Ugly Money? I'm I'm a I'm Ronald McDonald. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm the face. I am uh I am <clears throat> just the uh, spokesperson for the brand itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a team, and and I used to try to do everything myself. If you want to go fast, you go by yourself. If you want to go far, you go with a team. And so I came to a point in my life where I was going fast. I was getting to certain places fast, but I would never go very far. And I realized that I needed a team. So I built a team here in Atlanta, and, you know, we, we, got, a, we got a monstrous of a team. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I got guys that shoot. I got guys that edit. I got guys that do content. I got guys that are talent. I got guys that are tech. I got, you know, but, but I built my team not off of talent. I built my team off of work ethic. Mm. She does not know how to edit a video, but I can teach her. But she will be here every day grinding. I'm going to get more work out of her than this video editor nigga that only want to give me three clips a week. Right. She going to give me 300. He going to give me three. Now, his three clips is dope, but her 300 ain't that damn bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with her. 
because I'm going to get more. I'm going to get be more successful with her. I'm going to get more done with her. And quite frankly, she's here because she wants to be here, not just because she just want to get a paycheck. I don't give jobs. I give careers. Okay. I don't give jobs. I give. I. 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 I I, I welcome people that are passionate about the same shit that I'm on, and I give them an avenue to, to, to live out their passions and work through their passions. Advice to a struggling artist. Get a job. Get a job. Um, why get a job? Because they need to know the why. Everything in the music industry costs. Come on. Let me tell y'all something, artists. Uh, nothing in this industry is organic. Nothing in this industry is... It's not a talent show. It's a, it's, a, it's a business. Why does McDonald's sell more hamburgers than every other hamburger company? <laughs> Do they have the best hamburger? No. Hell no. Is it, is it, is, are McDonald's hamburgers real hamburger? They're not even. So why do they sell billions of them if they know that they're not real hamburgers? Why does McDonald's sell billions of burgers and we know if we ate this every day for a month, it would kill us? <laughs> they're selling killer hamburgers. And when you realize why McDonald's sells more hamburgers than every other hamburger company in the world, you'll mm. realize why your music career is not doing shit. Marketing because McDonald's. McDonald's is promoted and marketed on a whole nother level. You know mm. what a number one is before you go in the building. Right. So imagine this person having this amazing product this amazing song but nobody knows it exists that's why your shit's not going it's not because you can't rap good it's not because your song ain't jamming or and a lot of artists we get in our head like oh if i rap like this they gonna fuck with it no they're not yeah if you don't promote it they're not fucking with it Drake could be next door right now. Kendrick Lamar could be over here right now. And both of them could be doing concerts. But if nobody promoted it and put the word out, nobody's going to be there. Right. So you have quality, but nobody knows about it. So you have to understand that this is 10% talent and 90% business. And that's where the, the struggle comes from is the person that has 10% talent. And they're so focused on that 10%. And they think that it's worth more than what it is. Nigga, it's a nigga on the side. It's a nigga back here singing right now. Right. It's a crackhead on the corner right now that rap better than half these niggas. Oh and most of the sickest, most of the rawest, most talented people is locked up right now. So you mean to tell me that you want me to pay millions of dollars for something that God gave you? Because if you're talented, God gave it to you for free. And you ain't found a way to make $100 out of it yet? Bullshit. Or you ain't, or you're not even willing to put your own money into it first, and you want me to put my. You trying to scam me, my dog. <laughs> you want me to put up my hundred thousand. You won't put up a hundred in your shit, but your shit so motherfucking hard. How you about to make me some money? You ain't made you no money, bitch ass nigga. No. How you gonna make? Me and some I've money? done that. I've been the guy to say, you know what, bro? You hard. I'm about to put my money into you. Yeah, it never works out. That was. I mean, that's. It's a business. And once you realize that this is a business and start treating it like it's a business, it'll start paying you like it's a business. That's a powerful statement, sure. man. Um, last, last thing, right? right. Did, I, did I cover everything? Did I mix take, something? Take, take the time, man. Trip. Did, um, is it something that you want to discuss with the My people? My artist, China Monet. Talk to us. Um, I met China Monet four years ago. I was not trying to manage an artist. Mm -hmm. I was not trying to sign an artist. Uh, her work ethic is what made me fall in love with China Monet, the artist. Right. And I was I realized that she was willing to go as hard as I was going to go. She was willing to put the time, energy, and effort that I was. Mm -hmm. And she was willing to invest in her own career. And so I remember I was telling her when we started recording songs, I was like, China, we're going to have to find an investor so we can really, you know, pipe this thing up. And it was interesting thing that happened. She, I, I actively saw this woman going out trying to attract investors. Like she was actually going to do it. Like, right. hey, I have this going on. If you get it, you know, she was trying to f find investors. But then something special happened because she was working at Olive Garden in Albany at the time. She comes to the studio session because she would drive three hours to come record with me. I didn't even know she was all the way in. I didn't know she was living in Albany. I thought she was in Atlanta. Damn. When I found out she was in she Albany, down there I was like, with oh me. my God. Yeah, so, <laughs> so she was driving three hours to come record. Every right. time I would call her, like, hey, let's get something in today, she's like, I ought to be in about two, you know, about three hours. Mm -hmm. She says, hey, here's $500. I'm going to invest in this into my career until we find an investor. And I was taken aback. I was like, 
girl, you work out of God. You can't afford no damn five hundred dollars. She said, Well, I want to put it down because I'm serious about this shit. She's like, put it towards our career, my career. I said, all right, cool. I took a little five hundred. Next, next two weeks later, she come back. She's like, all right, here's another 500. I'm going to get this to every check I get. I'm going to get 500. She's working at Olive Garden and, and is a single mother in Albany, Georgia. Come on. Man. And she's willing to put up on her career. Mm. I said, no, keep your money. I'm going to be your investor. The fact that she was willing to put $500 into her, I think I put $150,000 in her first record, Chetsky. The mm. fact that you're willing to do it. Yep. You know how many niggas hit my DM every single day talking about, sign me, bro. And they won't put $50 on themselves. Mm. They won't put a single dime into themselves. And you got a damn woman that's willing to, that's working at Olive Garden, that is willing to, that's the type of person I want to do business with. And drive. That's the type of person I want to invest in. Because guess what? You going to go hard regardless if I'm working or not. See, a lot of people just want wait around for somebody to save them. And when you realize that nobody's coming to save you, and you start trying to save yourself, that is when you're going to prosper most in this in the, in life. And that's you know that's why I still have a lot of respect for China Monet. And so the last record we released was uh, Submissive. I cook, I clean, I fuck, I shut up. Um, I see amassed that. over thirty million views. <laughs> I see it's a, it's, I see a, it's a it's a social media mm -hmm. phenomenon. And you know the phones are ringing. And when the best situation comes, that's why I want to talk about her. Hey guys, uh, I need two commas. <laughs> Come on, anything. <laughs> Hello, that we sign our name on. It has to have two commas in it. So if you understand what two commas means, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for two commas. Anything. That's anything ugly money. It needs to have two commas in it. If you want to, if you want to work with Trigger Alert, if you want to bring this on your platform, or you want me to come to your streaming platform, I need two commas. China Monet, two commas. Trigger Alert, two commas. Ugly money, two, two commas. We'll start. Let's just start there. Let's just start so there. So anybody, I am open to work and collab with anyone. As you can see, this is a this is a this is a collaboration. Guess what? Send this bitch. Two commas. Come on. Couple of commas, right? Couple, couple of That's commas. That's all we're doing. We only doing big shit. And I'm gonna bust my ass mm. as long as I have breath in my lungs behind what I believe in. And that's mm. my team and my company. And, and myself. It, it, that was your first time dealing with an artist, or this is like, you know, you had experience with it. That's before. my first time investing in an artist. That's the first time I had enough money in my Oh yeah, you get you get into it now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's the first time I, I really, really put my money where my mouth was. And then it be you know, it became you know but it's still it's still it's still a marathon. Mm -hmm. It just because just because we throw some money up or invest in it doesn't mean it happens over it still doesn't happen overnight. Still got work. That was three years ago. We still got work to do. We still have to do the work. Right. And a lot of times people with money think that they don't gotta do the work because they got the money. And the people that don't got the money think they don't got to have the money because they got the work. Right. No, nah, you got to have both of them. <laughs> and then you got to have time. And then a little a little favor. I don't call it luck. A little favor. So we stay prayed. Yeah, we stay prayed up over here. But it, but it's the marathon. But it's something that when I, when I signed up for it, I was prepared to run that marathon with that young lady because I knew that I had a running partner that was willing to keep up with me and mm -hmm. wasn't going to quit on my ass either. Because a lot of these folks will quit on you. Right. I put hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the motherfucker, goddamn it, nigga decide he ain't he ain't wanna do this shit no more. Got my phone, my fit one one fifty gone. I could have bought me a rose. Come on. I could have bought me like a two thousand fourteen <laughs> rose rose, a little old school <laughs> the, the, jack. The, 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 you know what I <laughs> mean? Now would would you take, you know what I'm saying, uh with China Monet's success, you know what I'm saying, would you would you invest in another artist? I have. And you know what I'm saying? I have. Multiple or just like one like tons. How, so we got You got to every me. artist that wins my music summit. I give them an investment right then and there. Mm. I'm giving away twenty thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand cash money right then and there. And then you know we work afterwards. Um, yeah. yeah, no, my platform is still for the underdog. And and how do these artists get involved in your summit? They bet on themselves first. They pay a little fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, you pay fifty dollars and a song <laughs> review. To and let your talent win you up to the guy that won my last shit, he paid fifty dollars on the song review. Mm -hmm. He won that. He came to the summit. He won that. I gave him fifteen thousand dollars cash, and now I represent him. Like, how often do you do the events? Once a year. Next one's in April. Ugly Money dot online to get your tickets. Tickets go on sale next month, top of January. Tickets go on sale for the Ugly so Money. So what they got to do right now to get on that show in April? 
Oh, they can they can they can submit a song to my ugly money song right now. We do that shit every every fucking day, it's just about on live. It ain't him all the time, but yeah. Get somebody else. But do I was just saying, even when he get on. We that review line, songs all the time, and there's there's a reason why I put a ticket on it, mm-hmm. because if I said it was free, every nigga in the world would send they would be on song. it. <laughs> so I would be on this bitch for 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 for, for twenty nine hours, right? But That's if you a put fact. a fifty dollar ticket on it. It drops, yeah. What well, for my and ours is even cheaper. Yeah, exactly. If you drop it down, if you just put a price tag in front of it, that will weed out ninety percent of the bullshit. Come on, because <laughs> I don't want to work with them niggas anyway. <laughs> if you ain't willing to put twenty five dollars into your career, nigga, I don't want to sign you. And if you don't have twenty five dollars to put towards your career, then quite frankly, you're not ready to be signed. Because there's no way I can work with you and move you around and and put you in positions and and t- hey, I need I need you to be at this show. I need you to be at eleven forty five by eleven forty five. I need you to be at Atmosphere by twelve, and I need you to be at Magic City by ten thirty. Right. And you ain't got enough money for gas. Mm. So if you ain't got the money to put into your if you can't pay the submission fee, my nigga, right. that mean that one, you don't believe in yourself enough, or two, you're not in the position right now, and your time coming, just keep working. And I'll be here when you get here, hopefully. Now, if how I ain't blew explain, up in podcast land. Explain the process, right? Yeah. I put, I send my $50. Right. Y'all play my song. Right. Like, he be on there. That's what folks be starting to realize. But look, let, let him explain it. All right, so you send your $50, right. you, they, you play the song. Right. So how do I get to the next level, and how many people is getting to the next level? So yeah. I pick one a day. So how many, So you doing this in April, from here, from now to April, that's, how many people going to win? Like No, so, so check it out. So a song review, it's a virtual song review. So say I get on live, I'll probably go on live tonight about 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Say it's 20 people that submit a song. Right. I'm picking the hottest one. Mm-hmm. All right, you you come to the summit in April. Now he got a free slot. What's the cap on the on the summit? Ain't never no cap, dog. My shit three days long. I got seven stages going at one time. God damn. You ain't so, never been to my shit, huh? I ain't never been. Yeah, so yeah, you, you put me like on. No, I got so, the biggest I got the biggest music conference in the southeast. So on that in that music conference, right, right. this year, how many artists actually got to hit the stage? Every last one of them that won. Like how many if you had to Throw a number out there. How um, my biggest summit was the one that I sent somebody to money bag, yo. Oh, my goodness. Uh, each stage had 50 artists. We had five stages, five times 50. Five times 50 is 250 per day, three days, so 750 artists. God damn. <laughs> where, where you been at, bro? <laughs> I've taken people to Boosie already. I've taken people to Moneybag, yo. I took a person to Gunner, and he signed, got signed to YSL. He got no, I've seen the people yeah. that actually got, like, the, the guy that made it to Moneybag. Right. I've seen him, the guy that mm-hmm. made it to Boosie. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the guy that, that made it to um, Gunner, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. But I've seen these guys, but I'm not even knowing that they came from your stage. No, yeah, they came from the mm-hmm. music summit. I'm not, I'm not even knowing No, that. everybody that signs with me got to go through that gauntlet because I got to see which, if you if you ready. Now, if I sing you my song and you don't like it, but tomorrow I send you another 50 and you play yeah. that one, yep. I could keep sending you 50 until you put me on that damn stage, huh? You can send me 50 until you fix it. Because I'm going to give you, if, if I don't like it, if you send me your record and uh-huh. I don't like it, I'm going to tell you what I don't like about it. I'm not going to say, yo, you suck. Okay. I'm going to say, hey, bro, you're rapping off beat here and you're not from Detroit. <laughs> okay, so let's work on your timing. Hey, brother, it sounds like you recorded this shit in an old Obama phone. Let's get you in a real studio or whatever. You got to get your sound quality together. Hey, did you make this beat? It sounds like an old porno beat. Come on. Let's get you some different production. So I'm going to give you the constructive criticisms that you need to level that, that, that sound up. Whether you apply it or not is on you. So some people never apply. They still recorded the same bullshit ass studio the next day and say, oh, this one's going to be different. Like, nigga, your sound quality still suck. Right? And so that's what it is. But I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Uh-huh. Because at the end of the day, when it, now, when it comes to the summit, when you get to the summit, I'm not the judge anymore. Mm. I hand choose everybody that goes to the summit. By that time, I'm all a fan of you guys. Whoever right. I'm a fan you of. Already them. So how the yeah. fuck can I be yeah. the judge? Yeah. Every artist that have that has been, every artist that assigned to me or managed by me was picked by other people. Right. I just because I handpicked them all to be in the pot. Now whoever comes out of that's and that is so. Who that's a that's an uncomfortable moment because the future of my company is in someone else's hands, yeah. and I have no input on it. I mean that's unbiasedness though. For sure. I'm big on that. I'm big on that. You're going to get a fair crack. Everybody get a fair shake. That's tough, man. Sure. I, I, I fuck with that, man. That's crazy. 
<laughs> that's how the underdog can win. But that's why the fee is there, right? right. Because you win, you're not just winning a deal, you're winning a budget. So that's why people be like, I be at the gas station, hey, bro, sign me. I'm like, nigga, who going to put up the money? Right. I'm gonna put up the money. I'm about to go buy me another car. I want to buy, buy the cyber truck. I'm trying to sign a nigga. I'm buying, my, I'm buying myself a cyber truck for Christmas. You think I'm about to put the money up? Oh no, but that's why all those fifties. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. Seven hundred and fifty people at fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. That's that's your budget. Right. So now we, everybody that submitted, we pick that one person that wins, and then he wins the budget, and we put money into him. Ah, uh, that's yeah, cool. potluck. Yep, my, my and I's be doing the twenty five dollar jumps. Yeah, we make it real. I make it real affordable. I make it as affordable as I can. Yeah, but people I, hear it though. That's a crazy like folk. Like even if he play it, he don't like. But you know, I'm saying yeah, people tell you. is on there. They actually are listening. Like he give me a shot of air to my come on though. He be like, "Hosa, <laughs> fit your music." Yep. <laughs> it might fit the money. And then, but get what? I swear to God, you don't even know how many folk don't reach me just because he be like, "Hosa, you ain't fit it." Hosa, I know you on here, but you ain't fit nothing. I, <laughs> and, and then, but get what you can do it for me. <laughs> I I. I I support the underdog because I was the underdog. Right. And everything in my life, I was the last nigga picked for the team, my boy. Facts. And so imagine if I was the last nigga picked for the team and I end up owning that damn team. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking with the underdogs. But I know what I had to do to get to the point of being the last person picked to becoming the owner. And that's why I put business in front of it. Because if you ain't ready to do what is needed, I don't want to waste my time dealing with it. You're never going to make it Fair. because I've been through that and I know what it's going to take. You it's going to take work. some sacrifice. You but put I put hundreds of thousands of dollars behind my career before I got signed. Come on. Nigga, I'm not about to go back and forth with a nigga about $100. <laughs> we don't get your ass in Burger King and flip some of these whoppers and figure that shit out. See that you doing, bro. But this shit powerful, nigga. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> you know brother. what I'm saying? Like, I knew about the podcast and this stuff because right. that's what I do. So I, that's what I that's what I watch. You know what I'm saying? The podcast was the last thing to pop off. Yeah, but the summits, are y'all filming the summits? Yeah, it's on YouTube right now. The, the, see, the summits, the, the podcast is what the world has seen. Yeah. But we were doing artist services since 2019, 2020. Mm. I've been sending niggas to labels since 2019. I done got over seven people deals. Facts. Have they popped? We will see. We'll see. But they got them in the door. And so, um, but that that was the that is the the process of getting to the, the podcast. That is the process. That's when when people say that people they, they think people blow up overnight. Like, nah, I've been here for years. You just wasn't paying attention. And then when you pay attention, it's like, oh shit, I found it. Hold up. So for sure. <laughs> Let close this thing out because my fucking camera died. Oh, really? <laughs> hey, you know, this time nigga, to close the interview with all the lights. This nigga that did the longest interview I did. Oh, so yeah, nah, we're gonna get that right. It's gonna be the hey, best look, one. Hey, I'm look. telling you, this bitch gonna go viral. It's crazy. <laughs> all right, so the last question I got, man. Yes, sir. Um, this is your commercial. Sell yourself to the people for the people that don't know, for the people that do know. Sell yourself. Go. Sell myself. Okay, I'm not selling myself, but I, I, but I will say this. My name is Ugly Money Nietzsche. I'm CEO of Ugly Money Entertainment. You can follow me at Ugly Money Nietzsche. That's Ugly Money N-I-C-H-E. Also, you can follow us on YouTube at Ugly Money TV. Remember, the bigger the dream, the bigger the risk, the bigger the payoff. It's that ugly money. And that's who we outside with. Gone. We outside.